Let's look at the second activity. Okay, this is a block of mass six kilogram is being pulled up an inclined plane by a force of 40 newton applied through the rope parallel to the plane. The plane makes an angle of 30 degrees with the horizontal. The frictional force between the block and the plane is five newton. The block is pulled a distance of five meter along the plane. So here is the picture where you see the block on the surface. Okay, so let's see what we have. Let's look at what is given to us. Let's say a block of mass six kilogram. Here is the mass. It's been pulled up inclined plane with a force of 40 newton. This is the applied force. Let's write it so. Okay. Applied through the row parallel to the plane. The plane makes an angle of 30 degrees. That is the inclination here at the bottom with the horizontal. Not the force, but the plane. The frictional force between the block and the plane is 5 newton. There is friction in this situation. It is not frictionless. And the block is pulled a distance of 5 newton. That is the displacement. So, before we go on, let's start with the free body diagram. Remember, it is very useful, even if it's not asked in the question. And we're going to take the x-axis, which is this one, and we're going to write displacement. So we know this is the direction in which the object is moving. Now, the y-axis is going to be perpendicular to the x-axis. This is the y-axis. So now let's look at the forces. What forces are acting on that block? First of all, there is the applied force up the incline. This is the applied force. Second, there is a normal force. Let's fix that line. Better. Normal force. There is frictional force. And there is gravitational force down, straight down. Gravitational force or weight. So those are the forces that act on the object. Now we can go to 2.1. 2.1. Question 2.1. 2.1 says calculate the work done by the force F on the block. So the applied force. Work done by the applied force. And this by definition is equal to the product of applied force multiplied by the displacement multiplied by the cosine of the angle between the applied force and the displacement. Right. Let's get the angle. The angle. This is the displacement, as we said, and the force is in that direction. Here. Displacement, force in that direction. So, theta is zero degree. When you substitute, the applied force is 40 newton. The displacement is, is um, sorry, 5 meters, yes, 5 meters, cosine 0 degree. So let's do the calculation, 40 times 5, 40 times 5, times cosine of 0 degree. And that is 200 joules. So the answer is 200 joules. That is 2.1. Let's go to 2.2. Now, let's go to 2.2. 2.2 say calculate the work done by the force of gravity on the block. So, work done by the gravitational force is equal to gravitational force multiplied by displacement multiplied by the sine cosine of theta, angle between gravitational force and displacement. And we're going to look at that just in a moment. First, before we look at the angle, we don't have the gravitational force. It's not given in the question. They give you the mass, but they don't give you the gravitational force. Be careful, don't confuse the terms. So, how do you calculate the gravitational force? Product of mass times acceleration due to gravity. Alright? So, let's substitute back there. And this what done by gravitational force is equal to mass times acceleration due to gravity times displacement times cosine of theta. Let's find out theta. The angle between the gravitational force and the displacement is all this here. Here, this one is 90, and this one here is 30. This one here is the 30 of inclination. So, 
In one example previous, we said if the object is moving up, we just add 90 plus 30. So when the object is moving up the incline, the angle between the gravitational force and the displacement will be the angle theta between gravitational force and displacement is going to be 90 plus the angle of inclination. We already said that before in one example, so let's apply it. Now, if the object perhaps is moving down, then it will be 90 minus, because if it's moving down, then the angle will be this side here. Eventually, we're going to look at one example like that. So the angle here will be, angle here will be 90 plus 30 degree which is equal to 120 degrees. Okay, I hope you understand that part. So if we substitute here, we have equal to mass, which is uh, six, multiplied by 9,8, multiplied by the displacement, which is, uh, displacement is five, multiplied by the cosine of 120 degree. So let's do all the calculation. Let's do the calculations quickly. Let's go to the calculator. And then I look in 6 times 9,8. Okay. Yeah. 6 times 9,8 times... 5 times cosine of 120. 120. The answer is minus 147. So the answer is minus 147 years. That is the answer. Let's use the opportunity once more to record what is the minus mean. Minus does not mean direction. It means that energy is being taken away from the system. Okay? So let's go to the next one. Next one is 2.3. 2.3. Calculate the work done by the force of kinetic friction on the block. So, they're looking for the work done by frictional force. Okay? Let's take this and move it here. Work done by frictional force. So, the work done by frictional force is equal to frictional force multiplied by displacement multiplied by the cosine of theta angle between frictional force and displacement okay now you go back here to the free body diagram the frictional force is there so the angle between friction and displacement will be 180 degrees all right so theta theta here equal to 180 degrees. We can do now all the substitution, the whole substitution. Frictional force is given. <coughs> it's 5 Newton. So it's 5. The displacement is also 5. Cosine of 180 degrees. If you calculate, if you calculate here, Right? Simple calculation is 5 times 5 times cosine of 180. And that is negative um, 25. There we go. So we come back here. And this is equal to negative 25 years. Remember the meaning of the minus. Be careful with that. One, okay? So that is 2.3. Let's go to 2.4. Calculate the work done by the net force on the block. So, 2.4 is the work done by the net force or network. Now, network is equal to the algebraic addition of the work done by every force. We go to the free body diagram, we have four forces. One, two, three, and four. 
Normal force we didn't calculate it. Okay? But let's write it here. Let's substitute in this formula. So it's work done by the applied force plus work done by the normal force plus work done by frictional force plus work done by gravitational force. That is all the work. We don't have the work done by normal. We didn't calculate it. Now, let's calculate it quickly. Work done by normal force is equal to normal force multiplied by displacement multiplied by the cosine of theta. Now, theta. What is theta? It is 90 degree. Therefore, cos of 90 degree is equal to zero. Then, work done by normal force is equal to zero. Be careful. The work done by um, normal force is not going to be always zero. Okay? It's not always zero. But we can substitute now to calculate the net work. Work done by the applied force was 200 joules. 200 plus um, the zero of the normal force minus the work done by the gravitational force is negative 147 minus the work done by frictional force was 25. So if we go there, it's 200. Here it is, it's 200 minus 147 minus 25. The answer is 28 joules. So the network, or the work done by the net force, is equal to 28 joules. I hope it helped. This is the way to calculate the work done by different forces as well as the work done by the net force. Thank you. Next time we go to work energy theory. Thank you guys.